I'm going to review five ways that I analyze artwork with my students. So I have this in my workbook, but it's very easy for you to come up with your own sort of worksheet to have students do this. And I almost always do this in writing, so it forces students to kind of work on their literacy skills, which is very important for uh, cross-content connections and ensuring that our students succeed in school in all that they do. So um, I printed out several, you know, famous works of art. Uh, we can use these as examples as I go. And the workbook I have is the Art Students Workbook and the Advanced Edition as well uh, kind of covers this. But again, these worksheets can be created uh, by yourself very easily. So this first one I have here is an Art Principles Worksheet. So if we take a famous work, um, you know, like Starry Night, and I have the students kind of write out some basic information. So the sample, or the artwork sample is called And Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. It is from the Post-Impressionism School of Art. Please describe in full sentences how you see the art principles used in the image. So I would explain how I see unity, contrast, emphasis, movement, balance, pattern, and variety. And I'll go ahead and link the video where I actually do this at the end of the video as I talk about the, um, the art principles. And then uh, before we actually get into this, I have students do a tiny thumbnail sketch in this corner. It doesn't have to be detailed at all. I tell them, you know, it's kind of a stick band drawing. Um, by having them draw, it sort of kinetically gets the uh, image into their head and they return, retain that uh, a little bit longer. So by having them write it out, um, you know, students are able to kind of articulate what it is that we're seeing in this. So this is unified by its overall use of blue. Uh, we can say that the contrast can be seen in the warm versus cool colors. Um, emphasis, some people feel that this yin-yang symbol in the center is the point of emphasis because it's centered. I tend to think the moon, because it's the largest, brightest object in the sky, seems to be the point of emphasis. Uh, movement, there's the undulating uh, wave motion in the sky that sort of uh, looks like movement, or these hills almost look like churning waves. Um, this cypress tree seems to wave upwards, so there's lots of different areas of uh, movement. Um, balance, we would say that this is asymmetrically balanced, and perhaps this large dark cypress tree is balanced out by the mountains on the right-hand side. Um, pattern, we can see um, organic patterns of stars in the sky, uh, unpredictable patterns of lights in the town windows. Uh, we can see a pattern of small brushwork uh, throughout the whole painting. Uh, variety is where we're talking about three or more uh, different things. If you only do two, then you have contrast. So we have to have three or more differences. Uh, so we can say that there are there's a variety of sizes of stars in the sky. We can say there's a variety of shapes. We have a crescent. We have some circles. We have some triangles. We have some squares. Um, so variety in that particular piece. Another worksheet that I do is when we're getting students to try and understand the uh, schools of art and to identify them. So uh, we cover uh, Renaissance through pop art for my introduction students. And for my more advanced students, we go from uh, the Byzantine area to op art and cover extra movements in between. So if we have um, The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali, again, students would do a quick thumbnail sketch, again, almost as good as a stick man. Uh, what school of art do you believe this to be from? So then they would make a guess. And then what three pieces of evidence do you see that justifies that choice? And then uh, we have a little bit of a discussion and then they write down what the real answer was. Maybe they got it right, but if they got it wrong, what is it that you missed? Uh, and why did you get the wrong school of art? So some people, some students will say that this is realism because it looks realistic and they forget that, you know, anything dreamlike like this is going to be uh, surrealism. 
So let's try another one. Um, this is a very simple one that I do for my elementary students. Um, usually they're analyzing each other's work uh, where they talk about the best thing about the work as a kind of a criticism sandwich, uh, something they don't necessarily like about the artwork in the middle, and then what is something else good that they like about the work. So this gets them to help talk about um, these things with their peers, the best thing about their peers' artwork, something that could be improved in their peers' artwork, and another thing good about their peer artwork. So this becomes a very simplified version, and you could do this for artwork um, and breaking down what it is they like and don't like about it, or maybe even things that they wish the artist did instead. Um, I did this with my littles, and you know, a common thing is they wanted to see a little alien spaceship up top. Um, so that's kind of fun. It'd be interesting to see students kind of do that on their own. Uh, the fourth one, I've got Starry Night here as my example. And this is a critique that uh, I use for my middle school and high school students, um, where they you know, name the artists, name the artwork, and then they have to rate it from uh, one to 10, showing neatness, completeness, originality, and following directions. What art element is the strongest? Uh, and what's the evidence for that? Uh, what art principle is the strongest? What is the evidence for that? What is the most successful about the project? Uh, and besides completeness, what can be improved about uh, in this? And what can you say about the artist based on their artwork? So this is, um, as you look at the artwork, what is it you can uh, assume about the person who made the work of art? So in the case of Vincent Van Gogh, I said neatness was an eight, completeness was a nine, originality was a 10, and following directions was a 10. And a little asterisk there about the following directions thing. Uh, and the reason for that is that he had set out to do uh, a painting at night, um, so he was following his own directions. So what art element appears to be strongest? Well, almost any art element could be argued to be strong, but I said line seems to be uh, an important art element in this work, and the evidence is all major parts seem to have an outline, and all the paint is done in short line brushstrokes. What art principle is the strongest? Many are. Movement stands out for me, and the evidence is the sky seems to swirl, the hills are churning like waves, and the stars seem to twinkle. What is most successful? Van Gogh sets to sets out to try and do a painting of a night sky from observation, so he met his goal. It's a very original idea. There were not a lot of paintings done at night from observation uh, previous to this. Um, besides completeness, what could be improved upon in this project? There are some portions of the canvas showing between the paint strokes. Coloring the canvas might have hid this. And I had the opportunity to see this painting in person in New York City, and some of these gray areas are actually the canvas sort of showing through. And I was actually surprised when I saw it. You know, this is considered a masterpiece, and I thought, oh, it's going to be perfect. And I realized, no, it's a, it's a hand-painted work of art, so it's going to show the hand of the artist and also, you know, quote-unquote mistakes. And then what can you say about the artist? I feel the artist wants us to pay attention to the beauty around us, and maybe we don't pay enough attention. Like when you're walking along at night, you're not often looking up into the sky uh, and how beautiful it is. We're kind of looking at our feet, making sure we don't step on something so we miss the beauty that's around us. So uh, this can be set up as a, uh, a critique page where we just have some blanks for the students. So, um, you know, the name of the artwork, the title, and then all of those same points. So you can use it in my book, but obviously this is something you could make for yourself as your own worksheet for students. The last one I have is a more formal critique. I do this for my uh, advanced students where they take the, the classical approach of describe, analyze, interpret, and evaluate. So again, we mark down a title, uh, the artist, the year, describe the artwork as if you're explaining it over the phone. And I find that to be kind of helpful, you know, to describe it so clearly that you don't actually have to see the image to know what's going on in it. And then check what you included. Did you include the media, the elements, the style, the genre, the objects, and the technique? So I have them check it off. I'm hoping that they hit one, two, or three of those things as they describe it. And the more they do, the more I understand that they understand what we're talking about. Uh, analysis, describe how the artist used the art principles. 
So uh, the elements and principles, so we have unity, contrast, balance, emphasis, uh, variety, movement, and pattern. Interpretation, using evidence from above uh, to explain the meaning or message of the work. So what is he trying to say about this? Do we have something going on here where the woman is separated from her home, but also the home is separated from society, that there is this idea of isolation going on in this work of art. And then evaluation, judge the work, explaining why you feel that way. Is there room for improvement? So we sometimes use this, well, mostly we use this as we uh, critique each other's work, but you can use this to critique master work. So is there something you as the student or the teacher might see in this that you feel would be helpful or needs to be removed? Um, or do you feel like he's able to uh, get that feeling of isolation successfully and why that becomes the important part. So if you're trying to incorporate a little bit more literacy in your classroom, uh, this is a great way to do it. Uh, like I said, uh, I have this available in my art students workbook as well as my advanced student edition, um, but you can obviously make these on your own very simply.